Hi and welcome to my kitchen. Archie has kindly joined me today. We're going to be showing you how to make homemade pizzas. So please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to ring the bell to be notified of my weekly videos. The more the merrier. So please do also spread the word. I'd be really grateful. So this pizza recipe is really quick and really easy. I was actually taught how to make pizzas by our first Italian au pair that we had when Arch was a baby. She was called Babs and she had the most unhealthy diet of pizzas, chocolate biscuits, they were homemade pizzas though at least, chocolate biscuits, coffee Cook. and coke and yeah that was about it. I've actually got um, my pizza recipe in here. Um, which is my family meal guide and planner and it's seven days worth of recipes for all the family to enjoy which might be quite helpful at the moment. The recipe that's in there actually uses 500 grams of strong white flour. Strong white flour is quite hard to get hold of at the moment because everybody is baking like mad uh, with the current situation going on. So well, I've actually adapted the recipe. I've got 250 grams of plain flour that Arch has weighed into here and 250 grams of strong white flour. So you can mix the flours. Experiment, now is a perfect opportunity to get as creative as you can. So we're gonna use a Kenwood today. I love this, it's got a dough hook on it, which I will just show you, which is really handy. It means that you don't need to knead it by hand, otherwise um, it takes about 15 minutes to knead. Also in here, I might be able to show you, just move darling. No, I'm going to get them while Arch is doing this. So darling, you put the flour in. Yeah. One tablespoon of olive oil. And then we'll need to weigh the salt out. Oh, I found it. This is a Kenwood um, hand blender and these are little dough hooks. So you can use these. Um, if you don't have a big one like that. So Arch is putting all the flowers together and I'm just going to weigh out um, eight grams of, this is modern sea salt, into a bowl. It's not a good idea to pour the salt directly in because if you pour too much in, you end up with really salty pieces. So that's eight grams in there and then some yeast. So this is one packet of dried yeast. And again, if you don't have um, access to much yeast at the moment, just use half a packet. Um, luckily, I have got quite a lot in the cupboard. I stockpiled it. Um, not panic buying, but I keep quite a lot because I do a lot of baking. Well done, darling. And then pop the salt in. And then in here, I've got 300 ml of warm water. Warm water helps the yeast um, activate quicker, so it's a good idea to um, use warm. Did you put the olive oil in? Yeah. Well done. But far too. Okay, perfect. And it literally is as simple as throwing it all in there and turning it on. So it's going to take about um, 10 minutes with the dough hook. Once it starts forming into a ball, you can speed it up a little bit, but not too fast. Um, I'll probably put it on one and a half. And then cover it and leave it to rise. So it's just beginning to come together nicely into a ball. So Arch, do you want to turn it up a little bit more? And then literally just going to leave that for 10 minutes to do its thing. So I don't know if you can see, but it's come together really nicely in a ball. So it's time to turn the camera off and lift it up. That is absolutely perfect. So I'm just going to ease this off and pop it and leave it in the bowl. I'm going to cover it and put a tea towel over and then put it in a nice warm place. So Babs used to tell me to put it under the duvet. <laughs> you don't need to put it under the duvet, but you could put it in an airing cupboard or you could actually, I'm gonna pop mine on top of the arga until it rises, till it's actually probably touching um, the cling film. So you need to leave it for um, at least an hour, um, if not two, for it to really rise well. So there's my cling film. Lakeland do great um, reusable 
versions of these which are brilliant so um, those are quite handy if you can get hold of them and then a tea towel and then on top of the yoga for a couple of hours so our dough has risen beautifully I'm very pleased with that I'm now going to pour a little bit of olive oil directly onto the work surface I have given it all a very good wipe down first so it's really important to clean it well I've got some flour at the ready just some plain flour and I'm going to just push this all back and knock it back I think it's a terminology like that and it just you can see it's all going back back down as the air's coming out I'm going to divide this into three balls for the children I'm just going to take kind of one approximate amount out and then I'm just going to wipe this olive oil round like that I've got the flour to hand because I might need it, but I might not. And I'm just going to start stretching this. Now, I am not a professional um, when it comes to making these things. You know, in, in pizza restaurants, they do incredible things and spin it round. We're not going to do that. Um, I have got a lined baking tray here ready. And I'm going to put this one in here for Coco. Coco Stein, do you want to start stretching that one out for me? Arch, do you want to get your tray at the ready? No. So I'm just going to pop that in the olive oil too. And then it's just easier to work with. And then Archie can start stretching his out. Gus is actually doing a little bit of schoolwork, so I'm going to do his for him. It takes um, a little bit of practice stretching that. You want to try and not get any holes in it and not rip it. So I actually teach children, I run courses, I teach them how to make pizzas. So I'm just going to slide this in the middle there. And just, so I've got my baker glide in my trays and I just find it really helpful because actually you can lift it up out um, of the tray on the, on the piece of baker glide and literally just stretch, stretch, stretch it out. So the children have stretched out their pizza dough. It's quite important that you don't um, overly play with it and work it because it, it becomes um, quite tight. So handle it as little as possible and work with it as quickly as you can. So I've got here, this is my absolute favourite from Pizza Express, their passata. It's less watery. Um, if you don't have any passata, you can use a jar, um, a tin of tomatoes, but I would put it through a strainer and then throw the liquid away or save that for a soup or something and just use a more tomato bit. So Coco's going to show us how she puts the tomato on. I'll get you a spoon, you can do yours at the same time. Well done, spread it round, that's right. You don't want to have too much tomato because it makes it really um, wet. So a, a light smearing is what I would suggest, just like these two are doing. Well done. And then if you want more crust, obviously you don't go up to the edges. If you like crust, then leave a little bit of space. Well done, Coco. Okay, do you want to it up there? Perfect. Well done, <coughs> okay. Then for would you like ham or just um, mozzarella? Ham um, and a little bit of ham. A little bit of ham. Okay, there's some ham chopped up in there. Watch there's some mozzarella there. And I'm trying a bit of ham. And again, don't overly mozzarella it um, because it, hang on, up in there. Um, it gets too watery if you add too much. So just a, a light sprinkling. You can also, you know, you can put anything that you like on your pizzas. You don't have to stick with these, but these are just what we like. You like pineapple, don't you? Do you want to put a little bit more mozzarella on? Um, well okay, Coco, will you give Archie the ham? Yeah. And then 
mine absolutely go crazy and fight over the olives, so they're gonna have a few of those on there too. Well done, guys. Gussie, what would you like on your pizza? Can I please have olives and cheese? Yes. <laughs> well done. And then a bit of sprinkling. <laughs> You're making a pretty pattern, Kekka, with yours. Yeah. And then the last bit to put on is a good sprinkling of a cheddar. I'm just using English cheddar. And that is ready. Cookers one is ready to go in the oven almost. Well done. Pop, make sure you get it around the edges a bit more. <laughs> That's perfect. So Archie and Coco have got their pizzas ready and we're going to put them in the roasting oven of the Arga. I'm actually gonna swap them around halfway through. So one's gonna start on the bottom and one will be at the top because you want the bottoms to cook a bit. So if you've got an electric oven, that's absolutely fine, probably about 200 degrees and I wouldn't put it on the floor of the electric oven but um, it just makes it slightly crispier in the yoga. So guys, do you want to slide them in? Be careful. You're going at the top, okay? After you slide yours in the bottom. And then that'll probably take about 15 minutes, so halfway through I'll just swap them around. Mm. So I think one of the hardest things about making your own pizzas is actually cleaning the bowl. And I've learnt that if you let it dry on there, and then it's much easier just to scrape off like that. If you put water in now and then use a scouring sponge or something like that, it just gets caught up in sponge and it's really, really mank. So much easier to let it dry first. So I have just taken the pizzas out of the oven and I'm going to show you. This one is Archie's. And this one is Coco's. Mine and Gus's are still in the oven and they will be ready in a minute. If you've got extra pizza dough, you can either make the base and part cook it, so maybe for about 10 minutes. <laughs> I'm just spilling the chopping board. <laughs> um, part cook it maybe for about 10 minutes and then you could freeze it and put the toppings on when you're ready to use it. Or you could make an extra pizza. They're quite rigid, um, actually. They're quite rigid, so once that's cooled, you could actually um, wrap it in cling film and freeze it. And yeah, anyway, guys, thank you for showing everybody how to make pizzas with me, and I hope you found that helpful and you enjoy them. <laughs>